while ago I picked up a Chinese winding machine for winding coils. It's uh, an NZ2. I don't know the origins of it, but it seems to be all made out of imperial stuff. I suspect it's a very old design that's been copied. It works quite well on larger chunky stuff. Now, I got it because I want to occasionally wind, you know, the odd custom transformer coil or an inductor, like a choke or something. Uh, maybe because I can't get it, or in this case, I've got a job where I don't want to buy one. It's ridiculously expensive. I want a 1 milli Henry air cord inductor. Uh, I'm surprised how expensive they are. So I'm going to wind my own. And the problem I've come to, I want to wind it onto a fairly small bobbin. This is actually off a sewing machine. But I reckon it'll do just about right for what I want, especially when I need to make eight of them. So I want to go with an automated, well, not automated. I want to use the machine to layer the coils on nicely and keep count for me. There's a problem is, this doesn't fit on the machine, so I'm going to have to modify it. The NZ2 winder comes in three parts. You've got the coil dispenser with a, a brake, so it's got its own sort of drag brake for, um, you know, to put the tension on there. You also get this little sort of idler thing, so you wrap the wire from there down there. Back over this spool, this controls the brake. Then the main winding machine. What's really nice with this is it keeps tabs on there. You can adjust down here the settings for the size of the wire. I find that's not very accurate at all, but you just find a happy medium for it. What I really like, and which is why I bought it, it actually traverses the wire feed, so it builds layers up nice and consistently. If you just turn the handle, and off it goes. The spindle assembly, this part here, comes out of the machine very easily. You just undo this knob, pull this pin back, and out it pops. This shaft's about 215mm long. It's about 9.6mm diameter here. I think this is a 3 8 inch thread, or something like that. It's very old. It's just end stuff on here. Uh, quite a simple part to make. What I want to do is be able to slide this on, which obviously I can't. So this has got a 6mm diameter there. So what I'm going to do is manufacture a new one. So I don't want to ruin this. And I'm basically going to make one with a 6mm thread. I'm going to cheat a little bit. So I don't fancy machining all this long skinny thread. I can see it bending and going wrong. So I'm going to cheat a bit. So for the thread I'm actually going to use a piece of all thread. Which I've already cut down to length. So that's going to go there and screw into this body. Which I'm just going to machine out of a piece of steel. Like that. about the right place.
I've got the two parts of this now made, I'm just going to join them together. But something I've noticed with this, I just need to basically glue this in. I need to be a bit careful about how I do it, because if I wind it all the way into the bottom, it's got a slight bit of play in it, a bit of a wobble. And that's going to make this run a bit <laughs> badly. Nicely. I've already degreased all this, just going to get a bit of sort of lock tight. I'm going to try and get it <laughs> in the threads but not so that they that it all squirts out the front because that's going to be not the desired effect. I'm tempted, although I think it might be a bad idea, just to put a little bit on there, just a tiny bit. Let me just screw it in. And hopefully it doesn't <laughs> do anything horrible. <laughs> so that's at the end of that now. So I'll get my tissue. Oh. Oh. Pay for towel and just wipe up the excess. Because I don't want to glue the nut onto this. It's not my intention. If this ends up with a nut on there, you know why. <laughs> I didn't get all the glue off. Okay, just nip that up with a spanner. Not too much. Just let that cure up. Just to finish this off, I'm going to give it a nice black finish, a chemical black finish. The first part of this process is to, I think it's like an acid etch just to clean the surface of this all up. So I'm just going to pour some into this tray. Just needs to be deep enough, I think that will do. And then simply just lower this in. This goes to plan, put that in the shallow end and lower that there. And we leave that for 10 minutes. I'm going to use a timer. I know I'm like for forgetting. I'm just going to prep the next stage. Another tray there. And another coloured chemical. This is a <laughs> this is a blue chemical. I don't know what's in it. It's a bit turned steel black. Forms some sort of oxide layer. Not much longer. Not a few seconds. That'll do. Right, I'm going to wash this off. So I've got a nice tall glass <laughs> of tap water there. And I shall just lift this out. Watch I don't uh, get the string in it. Set that drip. And just put it in there. Just let it sit there for a moment. Wave it about a bit. Let's bring it across into the vat of blue stuff. And this will form the black oxide layer. And you'll see it happening. Wow, look at that. Right in front of your eyes. <laughs> Got to start the timer. Ten minutes on this as well. That's had enough time in there. Give it a dunk. Rinse off. And 
into some oil. Oh, stop spinning around. I get in the corner. And in she goes. Now look at that. Like a job in the town. I'm pretty pleased with that. Excellent. I can slide the bobbins on just as I need. Oh, they're nice fit that is. And I've even made the retaining nuts to clamp it on. It's a long screw, mind you. <laughs> it's got a bit of inertia in it. It'll fly on it all on its own. There we are. That's what I had in mind. It fits like an official part from the factory. Look at this. Oh, I'm pleased with this. Oh, excellent. 